We are gonna talk about the balance between estrogen and progesterone. This is a really important thing to have overall. A lot of times, one or the other hormones gets sort of a bad rap saying, oh, estrogen, you shouldn't have too much, which is true, but so often we focus on just estrogen versus saying these hormones should be in balance with each other. They counterbalance each other throughout the month. I'm Dr. Beth Westy, women's health and hormone expert, author of the books, The Female Fat Solution, The Female Menopause Solution. These are on Amazon. And you can subscribe to my YouTube, um, find me on social media, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and also subscribe to my podcast, which is The Female Health Solution. Lots of information out there for you to dive into. Now, when we talk about estrogen and progesterone balance, a lot of times people only care about this if they're trying to get pregnant, trying to not get pregnant, you know, something like that. But when we look at the overall balance, having your hormone levels in proportion at the right time of the month is essential for proper hormonal function. So a lot of times gals that have um, cycle issues, hormonal issues, issues with perimenopause, things like that, don't realize how your hormones shift and change, not only throughout the month, but also throughout your lifetime. So I just wanna introduce this. This is something that we dive into when we look at things like a Dutch report. This is a sample Dutch report that I've printed off. Looking at hormone levels here, we do an in-depth breakdown of this, talking about different pathways, which I go over with you when you get your own Dutch report, but just from, it looks confusing, we go through all of it. But in general, one of the things that can happen is that estrogen levels will get thrown off. Now to look at this and what this means in sort of some simplistic terms and give you some examples of this, when we talk about having estrogen dominance or excess estrogen levels, that can look like a few different things. And when we talk about this in terms of Eastern medicine, there are different things that can actually occur in the body because of this, different symptoms that you'll have and different ways to work with this right? Different things that you would have to do. In fact, there was a test that I went over just recently with somebody where she um, had started taking a supplement, which is not a bad supplement, but it did not match with what her system needed at that time. So it made things worse. Yes, absolutely. You were encouraging a pathway that was already overrun, right? So of course it's going to make those issues worse with estrogen. But when we look at estrogen in general, it is dominant more in the first half of the cycle. Day one is the first day of your period. And then day 14 would be about when you ovulate and about when those hormones shift over. Now this is a rough graph, right? That I just sketched out here. So it's not perfect by any means, but you would want this level to be elevated here. Now, when we switch over into the second half of the cycle, you would want progesterone to be more dominant. What happens a lot of the time though, is that estrogen sometimes will spike too high. These are different versions of it. Estrogen will spike too high here, but still come down. Sometimes estrogen elevates and does not come down and it's still too high here. In either case, you're having too much estrogen, right? Too much overall for what your system is noticing. Now, what you'll see when we look at the Dutch test is that because the Dutch test is taken at a certain time, of the cycle, it's about day 19, so it's about right here that we take that test. So your estrogen should be about here, right? But if it's elevated too high, you'll see that marker be up here or sometimes even above range here. Now that is having excess estrogen. Now progesterone, second half of the cycle, it means that you've ovulated and that your body releases progesterone. Again, still taking that test about that time you would wanna have this level here. So again, they, they shift the numbers because how you measure the marker, the numbers, all that stuff is a little bit different. But comparatively, you would wanna have about the same level of progesterone. You know, So if you have a normal level here, oh, I should mark that down. It would look like here on your Dutch test, like pointing straight up, it should be here as well in your progesterone chart, um, you know, showing that level here. Now, if your progesterone level has been thrown off because there's too much estrogen that depletes the amount of progesterone that can be released by your system after ovulation, a lot of times then what can happen? Sometimes you can have the same amount of progesterone. It's a good level. It's just if your levels are too high here, you will have that excess estrogen issues. Heavy cycles, irregular cycles, lots of pain, <clears throat> you know, problems with fertility, things like that. When we look at the progesterone here, if your progesterone levels actually come up, but then come down, you'll have levels that are down here, or sometimes you just have a little tiny blip 
and they stay really, really low, in which case your progesterone levels will be just below range. That's what we see typically on a Dutch test. So looking at these levels, understanding what your test says can really show us in depth what's going on. Um, there's a gal who, um, history of PCOS, history of very painful cycles and very, very irregular. Her progesterone was very low. And one of her things that she wanted to work on besides stress and some other things was actually fertility. Her goal was to get pregnant and she'd been trying for several years, three or four years. And nothing, nothing was happening. She wasn't even getting pregnant and it's because she wasn't really ovulating regularly. And if she was ovulating, her progesterone would just <laughs> blip and come right back down. So when we were able to work on her cortisol levels, work with her stress levels, and then actually managed to bring her estrogen down and have it come down within a moderated level. I mean, it wasn't even where I would call fantastic. It wasn't even like great. It was okay, but we had improved it to an okay point. She is now almost 12 weeks along. Right now is recording this. Like so exciting that she was able, she's like, yeah, I've never been able to even get pregnant before because her system was so thrown off because that counterbalance of estrogen to progesterone was so off. That's why it's so important that we dive into this and look at this. But this is what we do with a Dutch test. We look at exactly what your system is doing, exactly how your body, how your liver is processing this, and then give you the right recommendations moving forward. Making sure that we're not missing anything. Making sure that everything that you need to be addressed is addressed here so that your levels can improve. It doesn't happen overnight, right? A lot of times it can take months. This gal that I'm, that I'm um, you know, talking about right here, we've been working together for about six months. Takes a while, takes a while for this to happen. But the fantastic thing is, is that your body has this amazing ability to improve, right? To, to have your levels improve as long as you give it the right opportunity. So that's what we do. And we know what opportunity to give it by doing a Dutch test. So make sure you go below this video, click that link, learn more about the Dutch test, learn more about how it can really help you. And of course, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to either comment below this video or even reach out to me if you're not comfortable commenting.